Well, y'all gather around because I'm going to tell y'all about the David Turner encounter or the David Turner incident. Now, this happened. This is part of my family history. And if truth be known, this is what really got me interested in Bigfoot. Uh, I was relayed this story by my grandfather, Brant Raymond Bransford Turner, uh, in sometime 1976. So I was roughly nine years old at that time. And uh, Granddad, Granddaddy Turner was born uh, 22nd of January, 1920. So he was around 57 years old, 56. He was, well, basically he's my age. But uh, I do remember uh, my granddad was a good man. Uh, he's probably the most honest man I've ever met in my life, I've ever met since. And uh, you know, I, 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 all my life I've strived to be like him. And I reckon if I'm half the man he was, I might have turned out to be a pretty good fellow. But anyway, uh, this happened in Marabone, Kentucky, and I don't remember uh, how it came up, but we would take walks uh, after after dinner, uh, which you know lunchtime for everybody else. But after the the lunchtime meal, okay, we would take walks up up the hollow, and Granddad would take his walking stick, and I remember he would come around and say, "Come on, let's go for a walk, or let's go walking." And I just, I loved to listen to him talk. Uh, a lot of times I had difficulty understanding him because he was a very soft-spoken man. And if I was following along behind, you know, you couldn't always hear. But at one time during one of these walks, the question came up about uh, Bigfoot. And I had to, I, I do remember that it was early 1976 I had gone to the movie theater over in Glasgow, Kentucky and watched a movie called uh, Sasquatch, The Legend of Bigfoot. So probably that was probably piquing my interest because where we were going was pretty much back in the sticks. Right? And uh, so Granddad relayed the story to me about his brother, David Glee Turner, now, my great uncle. So uh, David was his uh, younger brother. Now David, I'm, I looked this up so I would get the dates correct. David was born the 16th of June, 1931 in Marabone, Kentucky. And so before, you know, I tried to remember, I couldn't remember, I couldn't think back if granddad had told me this happened in, during the 1930s or the 1940s. Uh, he had told me, but I couldn't remember. Now, since I've got David's birthday looked up, I can I can tell this happened in the mid night mid to late 1940s when this incident occurred. So where they lived, it's called the Turner Holler, Turner Holler, and uh, they lived around I don't know it's probably three miles anyway. It, it may be close to four. I've never measured it, but it's off the main road. The main road was Highway 90 there in in Marabone. And uh, you would go down from the main road and you would cross a, a creek, which was probably 80 feet wide or so. Uh, once you cross that creek, you would drive on a gravel lane back the, you know, three miles or whatever it was to the end of the gravel lane and you'd reach the Turner Hollow. Now the Turner Hollow, that, that gravel lane ran right beside the branch, which is a small creek about 10, 12 feet wide. So, back when this occurred, uh, there was no road. Uh, matter of fact, there wasn't even a bridge there at the creek. I remember as a kid, uh, we would drive across through the water, and I always thought it was cool because you could look out the window and see the creek running, you know, under the car. Like, oh, wow, water. So, anyway, I thought that was cool. They, they did later put up a, a concrete bridge. But uh, now back when this occurred in the 1940s, there was no road, uh, there was no bridge, and the road, they used the uh, branch, Small Creek, as their road to get back into the Turner Hollow. So, you gotta get it in your mind, they're, they're way back off the main road. And uh, David had a buddy that had a car. 
And at that time, you know, if you had a car, man, that was really something. Not everybody had a car. All right, this, this is these, these people were poor. This was a poor area, and which was not not uncommon at that time. Uh, matter of fact, I remember my mom uh, telling me about how they would go when they went to town. Uh, she remembered as a little small girl, uh, she would ride on the back of the wagon that was pulled by a team of mules. So not everybody owned a car at that time. And they would use the branch for the road. They would drive the wagon and the mules through the branch or the small creek, you know, 10 or 12 feet wide. And they would cross the large creek up next to the main highway. They'd get out on the main highway and, of course, go to town, the store or whatever. So, David's buddy uh, could not or would not bring his car through the, the branch to get back the three miles or whatever it was back to the Turner Hollow to pick him up. So what David would do is go a uh, walk the the three miles or so uh, branch, and it might have been close to four. I, I don't know. I've never measured it, but it's a pretty good distance. So he would walk the branch uh, cross the creek and then uh, walk up to the main highway and catch a ride with his buddy. And they would go to Berksville and uh, I, I think uh, the deal was they had, there was a picture show over there, a movie theater, and they would go watch movies or you know, go dancing, whatever they did in the 1940s. I have no idea. So one night, uh, he would come back late at night and let David off and David would walk, you know, the three miles or whatever it was, back down the branch to get back into the Turner Hollow. No, no light, you know, just by itself. And uh, so one night, he let David out, and David crossed the creek, and there was a tree, uh, a large tree that grew next to the creek, and where the creek water had had risen, you know, it had washed the dirt out. It exposed, you can see the roots of the tree were exposed. And and this, the, when the incident happened, David was walking past the tree going home and something, a large white creature standing on two legs stepped out from behind the tree, grabbed David and picked him up off the ground in a bear hug and started squeezing him. Well, David uh, was fighting, trying to get loose from this thing, and he couldn't. And I remember uh, my granddad told me that David had relayed to him that it was squeezing him so tight that he couldn't breathe and he was about to pass out. Now, during this time, he noticed there were other ones coming out around uh, in, in that you know vicinity. And somehow, uh, David got loose from the creature. Now, I don't know if it let him go, and I can't remember. Uh, it seems to me that Granddad told me that, you know, there may have been a pocket knife involved. Uh, there might have been some poking involved. I'm not certain because I can't remember. But uh, somehow, however it happened, either it let him go or he convinced it would let him go. Uh, he got released from the creature. And David, as soon as he hit the ground, he hit the ground running. He was terrified. He ran home uh, down the, the branch, straight back into the turn hollow, and uh, the whole way. He was just, he was terrified. So, what, I asked Granddad, I said, well, what was it? And Granddad said, uh, David, the only thing he could think of, you know, at that time, there was no Bigfoot. Nobody had heard this Bigfoot term. It hadn't been coined yet. So David was thinking, you know, these things were big and white. And they were standing on their hind legs. And he thought, it, since it had him in a bear hug, you know, the only thing he could relate that to possibly be would be a polar bear. And uh, so it was his belief, you know, these were polar bears, big hairy things that walk on two legs. He, he didn't know. They were white. And of course, you can imagine how the local community, you know, took that. Okay, oh sure, polar bears, right? But now I asked Granddad. You know, Granddad believed it. Granddad believed it. Uh, and I asked uh, 
granddad said, have you, you ever seen anything strange like that or odd? You see any white things or polar bears? And granddad told me, no, no I've, I've never seen anything you know, out of the ordinary around here. But there was a, a there was an area there that you had to pass through that they called the Hanton Holler. Okay, that's for if you don't speak Kentucky, that that means Kentucky English is Hanton Holler. Regular English would be the Haunted Hollow. And there were multiple reports where people would see a white specter or something white over in the woods there. So you know that that could be related. It seems kind of, kind of related, but I, I don't know. Don't know for sure. But uh, that changed David. Uh, he still went on the weekends, uh, walked to the main road to meet his buddy. But uh, now, uh, Granddad said that David took a pistol with him, an old pistol, and he would uh, walk. And when he crossed, uh, before he crossed the creek. Uh, the, main, the main creek next to the main highway, he would take that pistol and stuff it up underneath the roots of that tree. And uh, late at night, when he came back and his buddy let him out, he always had his buddy shine the lights on from the car on the tree until he retrieved his pistol. And then he would, you know, wave him on. And uh, then, you know, make the trek, you know, back through the, through the, branch back to the Turner Hollow and home and I did not only did I speak to my grandfather about this I spoke to my mother about this and she knew all about it and she said that was one of the reasons they had uh, started a set of rules there that uh, the girls could never walk alone they were not allowed to walk alone they always had to pair up and anytime they were going from the Turner Hollow uh, out to the main highway, uh, there had to be at least two of them. They were never allowed to go anywhere alone. But uh, yeah, that's that's the David Glee Turner incident or David Turner incident or encounter, whatever you want to call it. And that's what really got me into Bigfoot. Uh, I wanted to share that with you and uh, hopefully, you know, pass this on to my family because as far as I know, it's not written down anywhere anymore. I did, I did have a website at one time, but I, I'll let that go. But uh, uh, thank you all for, for hanging out with me and uh, letting me share that story with you. If you've enjoyed this presentation, consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. Remember to select all on the notification bell so you will be sure to receive the latest video and audio content from Squatch DTV where the truth is always first and foremost. As always, we humbly thank you for your support.